Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on laptop power technologies. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to focus on the requirements from our 22701 Essentials exam, section 1.10, where we need to install, configure, and optimize laptop components and features, specifically these electronics, electrical pieces associated with laptops. We need to understand what auto switching is. We need to understand what fixed input power supplies are associated with. And we need to know more about the way batteries are used in laptop environments. Let's start with this idea of auto switching and fixed input power supplies. What you'll probably want to do if you have a laptop is grab this power adapter you have associated with it, that power brick we tend to call it because it's just, these days it's about the size of a brick. It's getting a lot smaller. But that's something we have to lug along with us because this power adapter is not something that's built into most laptops. We like to keep the laptops very small. We keep the power separate over here. The power components also tend to get a bit warm. So sometimes it's nice to have those separated from the laptop. If you look at the power supply, you should be able to tell if it can automatically switch between different voltages or if it will only work with a single voltage. These days, you tend to find laptop power adapters that are auto switching. But I have seen a very new power supply that you can buy off the shelf, a third party one that works with many different kinds of laptops. And you must manually change the voltage of what it will use on that power supply. So even our most modern ones might be a fixed input that we have to change. Your voltages on power supplies tend to be either 110 volt or 220 volts. And you're able to either automatically switch between those right on the power supply. You don't have to change anything. Or there's a big switch on it. And it usually is very obvious. One way that you can tell is to look at the details that are on the label of the power supply. In fact, this is the Dell power supply that I've used. The input here is it can use 100 volts or 240 volts. And there's not a switch on here. So this is an auto switching power supply. And it uses those. AC voltages, you can see our AC symbol right there, at either 50 hertz or 60 hertz, depending on if we're at 100 volts or 240. And the input that it needs to be able to operate is at least 2 amps of power. So as long as we're connecting to a power source that has those requirements, this power supply will work perfectly. If we're in another country, we may have to use an adapter to change the type of prongs that are on the end of the power. But that's OK. We don't have to use anything else. We don't have to convert any voltages. This power supply will handle it just fine for us. This power supply also outputs 19.5 volts of DC power. You can see our DC symbol there. And it outputs 4.62 amps out of its output connection into our laptop. And if we look at the very tip of what's plugging into our laptop, we can see on that tip the inside connector is running at a positive voltage and the outside connector is our negative. And if we were plugging in and looking at the taking and measuring this with our multimeter, we would be able to see the positive and negative leads right there on the inside and the outside. The maximum output power for this particular AC adapter, 90 watts. So if we're plugging into a laptop that needs 90 watts of power, this is the power supply for us. If we've got a bigger laptop, some of the larger ones need 120 watts of power, this power supply won't work. If our laptop needs 75 watts of power, this laptop uh, power supply will work fine because it will output at least 90 watts for us. If we only need 75, it'll only use 75. But if it's bigger, we're going to need a bigger power supply. So be careful and look at these numbers. If you're going to another country, you're plugging into a different power supply, you want to know for this laptop, will it be able to handle the output that this is providing? All of that information should be available to you right on the power supply adapter itself. If we're not plugged into power, then we're going to need to be on battery. And our battery technologies have changed quite a bit over the years. When laptops were first released, in fact, even before that, some rechargeable technologies were using batteries that were nickel cadmium, NICAD. It's a technology we don't see much anymore because it's relatively expensive. And these days, we need more and more batteries, and we need them to be less expensive. So we don't see NICAD used much anymore. One of the great advantages of NICAD, however, is you could really discharge that one completely out and put it back into a charger, and it would charge back up again. Very flexible in how it worked. But that flexibility came with a price. And so we moved from NICAD and started using something called a nickel metal hydride, NIMH. 
Uh, these types of batteries can be over discharged. You have it all the way down to zero and you let it sit there for a while, you may find that you're not able to charge that battery any longer. These also though had a very high self discharge rate where you would charge the battery, set it aside, set your laptop aside for a while, come back in a couple of weeks and you may see, may see the battery at 80% of its charge, even though you charged it up all the way two weeks ago. That's because when it sits on the shelf, it slowly degrades. So if you're planning to have a battery somewhere that you want to be able to pull out at any time and have it fully available, nickel metal hydride may not be the type for you. These days, most of the laptop batteries that are created are lithium ion batteries. One of the challenges we have with lithium ion is they're relatively inexpensive, but as soon as they're manufactured, there's a shelf life. They, there's a clock that starts ticking immediately, and that battery is only going to be good for a certain amount of time. No matter how many times you charge it and discharge it, you've got a shelf life associated with those. That charge capacity in these also decreases over time. Not as much as the nickel metal hydride, but it's not something that you could put on the shelf, come back in a number of months and expect it to be available and immediately accessible and charged up for you. These also don't handle these deep discharges very well. You don't want to discharge the entire battery and let it sit there for a week. You want to make sure to keep it topped off or at least not at a very, very low point so that it's able to recharge properly whenever you'd like to be able to use it. If you want to see what your battery's like, take it out of your laptop, have a look at the battery, and written right onto it will be these lithium ion. It will tell you the type of battery that it happens to be. And in fact, it will tell you a little bit more about the battery. This battery is rated for 11.1 .1 volts of DC power. There's our DC power symbol. And you can see that it's a 7,200 milliamp hours. And in the terms of being able to use it, the capacity of this battery is 80 watt hours of battery life. That 80 watt hours is really useful because that tells us the type of battery we're using, how much power we can get out of it. If we're looking at another battery, here's another one down here that's, again, 11.1 .1 volts of DC. Its capacity is only 56 watt hours of time. So if you get the option of which battery you'd like to use for your laptop, sometimes you have a choice of a regular size battery or an extended distance or an extended life battery, that battery may be a larger number of watt hours and it may last a longer amount of time. So if you're someone who travels on a plane or you're away from the power for longer amounts of time, it may make uh, sense to get the larger capacity battery, even though it's a little bulkier, it might take up a lot more room. Whenever you're traveling with it, it'll last you a lot longer down the road. Let's review what we've learned about these laptop power technologies. Our first question is how can you tell what kind of power input is supported on a laptop power adapter? Well, we've already done that. You grab the power adapter, you look at the requirements. It should tell you right on the power adapter exactly what it supports. If it is missing that information, you're better off finding a power adapter that you can trust and take to different countries or different power configurations just to make sure you don't run into any problems. Our second question is, which modern battery type has a limited service life? Well, one of the ones that we're using today, and as soon as it's manufactured, that clock starts ticking, is our lithium ion batteries. So we can't expect that those are going to be around. Five years from now, we're going to have to buy new batteries when that finally extends its final life. And what's the best way to determine a battery's capacity? Well, if we look at the battery itself, we should see a value for watt hours, WH. And that'll be able to tell us Generally speaking, how much time we can expect from this battery, and we can start comparing that to other batteries as well and decide what type of battery we'd like to have inside of our laptop. Well, that covers what we need to know for our laptop power technologies on 22701 section 1.10. We've looked at auto switching, fixed input power supplies, and we've gone through a number of those battery technologies. If you'd like to watch any of our other videos, not just on laptops, but any of our A-plus requirements, or you'd like to send me an email, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com. <laughs>